In the previous lectures, we have studied some basic concept of differential calculus for multivariable functions. Today, we will study the central theorem of differential calculus, the inverse function theorem. Firstly, I will state the theorem here. Uh, suppose omega is an open subset of Rn, and f is a map from omega to Rn, which is continuously differentiable, C1. And uh, a is a point in omega. The condition is the Jacobian determinant of f at this point a is not zero. So what this means, we know that the derivative of f at this point a can be considered as a linear map from Rm to Rm. This is linear. Now the determinant is not zero means that this linear map is invertible. So our condition for the inverse function theorem is just that the linearization of f at this point a is inevitable. Naturally, we expect that f is inevitable in some sense. But as we know, the differentiability of f at this point a and its derivative depend only on the local behavior of f near this point a. So we could not expect f to be globally invertible. It can only be locally invertible at the best. What locally invertible means? This is the conclusion of our theorem, the inverse function theorem. The exact meaning is that there are in this open subset of Rn denoted by U and V such that A belongs to U and uh, B, B is the image of A under our map F belongs to V and uh, F as a map from U to V <coughs> uh, is inevitable. It's injective and subjective, so it's inevitable. So it has an inverse map. The inverse map is a map from V to U. It's also smooth. So this is the inverse function theorem. Of course, this U is a subset of omega. Okay, this is our main theorem for this lecture. To prove this theorem, we need the following uh, uh, proposition. Uh, if the Jacobian determinant of f at this point a is not zero, what can we get? There exists epsilon positive, kappa positive, such that for any x, y near this point A, more precisely, x, y belongs to the ball centering at A and the which radial epsilon. We have this is the distance of the image of x and y under our map f, this distance is no less than kappa multiplied the distance between x and y. Let us look at this uh, consequence. Uh, obviously, this means that f is injective on this small ball, because for x 
and y, for different x and y in this ball, fx could not equal fy. So f is injective on this map. Our theorem uh, want to solve that f is immutable. Firstly, uh, as a consequence of this lemma, f is uh, injective. Okay. So uh, we prove this lemma. To prove this lemma, uh, for simplicity, we denote the derivative of f a a by a. This is just for the simplicity. You know this metric by A. And we consider a map. This map is phi from omega to Rn defined by phi x is x minus A inverse fx. We consider this map. So this map is of course C1 because this is the uh, identity map, very smooth, and F is C1. Uh, this is a linear map, the composition is also C1, so phi is C1. And the derivative of phi at our point A, what's this? This derivative, here this is the identity map, the derivative of this map is the identity metric, the n by n identity metric. And uh, the derivative of this composition, this is a linear map, the derivative is itself. And uh, the derivative of f a is f prime a. So by the chain law, we know that the, the derivative of this part is just the multiplication of uh, these two metric. But f point a is exactly a. So, so this is also the identity metric. Therefore, this is the n by n zero metric. Hence, the metric norm of phi, of the derivative of phi at a is zero. Do you remember the, what the metric norm means? Ah, the metric norm of a metric is the maximal value of, of this function over the uh, unit sphere. Ah, so this is the metric norm. Ah, if this is a zero metric, of course the norm is also zero. Okay. Now, by This map, this function, is obviously continuous. Okay? You see? Phi is the same one, therefore phi prime is continuous. And the taking metric norm is also continuous. So this is the composition of two continuous functions. It's continuous. And the this, the, the value of this function at this point A is zero. So we can choose an epsilon small enough such that for any x near A in this ball, center at A and a radial epsilon, we have the norm of the derivative of phi at this x set close to A less than a half. Ah, this is by the continuity of this function. Ah. Now what, what, what we do now? Uh, we have an, a point A here and we have a radial epsilon. Uh, we want to solve any two point in this ball we have this inequality. So we choose any two point x and y here x and y in this ball. Ah. For x, y in this ball, we can apply the um, mean value inequality to our map phi. Ah. 
அந்த we can get some point between x and y between the segment x and y there is a c here ah such that the distance between phi x and phi y ah is less than or equal to the metric norm of the derivative of phi at this middle point in the middle point times the distance between x and y but as x and y as x and y in this ball any point between the segment in particular our epsilon our c here c is also in this ball so this will not greater than a half times x the distance between x and y okay on the other hand the left hand side of this inequality uh, we have however phi x minus phi y what's this by the definition of phi this is exactly x minus this is phi x minus phi y we rewrite this in another form this is exactly x minus y minus a inverse fx minus fy so we can apply the triangle inequality to get the norm of this first part minus the norm of the second part and uh, by the definition of a metric norm we look at here we have what we have we have uh, a inverse f x minus f y the norm of this vector will not greater than the norm of the inverse metric ah this is by the by the metric norm by the definition of metric norm we have this inequality apply this inequality here uh, we can get this ah this part this part will apply the inequality there huh? so this is fx minus fy putting these two things together what we get a half of this distance is not less than this distance minus this so combine these two this is one this is two uh, full on one and two we get what ah. this is equal therefore we have we move this to the right hand side and then move this to the left hand sorry we move this to the left hand side and move this half to the right hand side we will have we have this inequality for any x and y in this ball uh -huh. that is our deserved result So this number, this is number we denoted by kappa, and the, the lemma is proved.